Knives Sports Adventures here. So today I'm going to be doing a video uh, with several different comparisons, but we're talking about the Benchmade SOCP folding knife here. So the reason I'm doing some comparisons with this knife is that in recent years, Benchmade has been kind of criticized for reducing the quality and the workmanship and the materials of their knives without reducing the prices of their knives. Uh, so that has led to a lot of knockoffs like this one being made. I'm going to compare this knife with the real one. Uh, and it also makes some interesting comparisons with some other knives. So first to demonstrate what the economics of this are, I'm gonna compare this knife with a similar knife, which is the Zero Tolerance 0452 carbon fiber. So this is the Benchmade, this is the Zero Tolerance. Similar knives in size, which is one reason that I decided to compare them. Another reason that I decided to compare them is that these are both knives that are made in America. They are actually made in the same city, in Portland, Oregon. So Zero Tolerance and Benchmade factories are only about 16 miles apart. So they're coming from the same labor pool, they're manufacturing in the same area. This is a very good comparison for economics as far as knives go. Uh, depending on where you get these, the prices are pretty similar. Prices on the Zero Tolerance right now are ranging from about $220 to $275. Uh, very similar for the Benchmade. Uh, I bought both of these at brick and mortar stores, so I actually paid uh, $200 for this one, I paid around $215 for this one. So pricing very similar. However, the materials and the workmanship that we're dealing with are not similar at all. Uh, so if you do a breakdown on the Benchmade, this is, the blade is D2 steel. Uh, D2 steel runs about $16 for a billet that you could make two or three blades out of. The handle is what they call CF Elite, which is carbon fiber reinforced nylon, which is pretty much the same as glass reinforced nylon. I'm sure the carbon fiber version is a little bit ex more expensive. I wasn't able to find um, pricing for this very easily online, but the tensile strength, the properties, if you look at glass reinforced nylon versus carbon fiber reinforced nylon, the properties are actually very similar. The feel is very similar. I mean, this might as well be FRN, which is dirt cheap. Uh, that I was able to find more prices on. The liners are hardenable steel. Usually that's like a 440 steel. Benchmade doesn't list it. In any case, it's a very, you know, it's a good steel, but it's very inexpensive. Overall, you know, what you're looking at here in the Benchmade, this is, you know, right around $20 worth of materials. Contrast that with the Zero Tolerance. The Zero Tolerance has S35VN blade steel. Uh, it has a full titanium frame lock side piece. S35VN is about twice as much as D2, so you're looking at about $32 versus $16. Uh, the piece of titanium is about $45 worth of titanium here. Uh, and carbon fiber in this thickness is actually surprisingly expensive. The prices I was able to find um, tell me this is about a $40 piece of carbon fiber on this side. Uh, you know, standoffs are about the same. Bearings are not really that expensive. So overall, you're looking at about $20 worth of materials here, and you're looking at about $120 worth of materials in this knife. And the knives are the same price to me, the consumer, right? So Benchmade is charging you a lot more uh, for workmanship, for whatever they decide to, to cause, you know, their markup is a lot higher. And the workmanship is really not that much, you know, is not anything special. This knife is a lot smoother. It's a lot better machined. It's a lot nicer to hold, you know, so perceived quality to the consumer. This is much better. Price is about the same, which makes us question the knockoff, right? So, Obviously, this is not going to be the same materials, right? They probably went with the cheap, you know, the cheaper glass reinforced nylon, but it doesn't really feel any different. I can't tell the difference in my hand really with the feel of these knives. Surprisingly, the mechanics also feel 
about the same. Uh, if I didn't know which one was the real one and you told me they feel, and it didn't tell me, they feel so similar that even, you know, knowing which is which, switching them back and forth in my hands, closing my eyes, feeling what the lock feels like, it's, it's really good. I can't really tell which is which. Um, the blade edge retention does tell a little bit of a story, but it's not exactly what you would expect. So in my edge tests, the real Benchmade made 250 cuts. Um, the knockoff made 150 cuts, both before dulling to the point where slicing paper was difficult. Real one is better. However, that doesn't tell the whole story. So because D2 doesn't have great corrosion resistance, when I'm actually carrying the knockoff, this says D2, I suspect it's actually 440C based, based on the way it performs. But because of the fact that this blade has better corrosion resistance than this blade, this one actually stays sharper or longer in my pocket while I'm carrying it. I've mentioned that before uh, with D2. You know, when I'm working, sweating, moving around, you know, just the amount of moisture that's in your pocket from the knife being in there and just you're moving will corrode away the edge eventually. Even though I keep my knives oiled, I keep choji on them, they're, they're well taken care of. You know, that's one reason why I prefer the S35VN in this knife over this D2, because this one stays sharp for a couple months in my pocket, whereas this one doesn't even make it a week. This knife did make it several weeks in my pocket without going dull. So while edge testing, this definitely does better, real world conditions, I generally find that this knife actually works out better for me. Um, let's talk about glass breakers, right? So this is the real one. This has a real carbide glass breaker. This is the fake one. Uh, it does not have a real carbide glass breaker. This is uh, hardened steel. I don't know if you can see on the video, but this did flatten just a little bit when I was testing it on bottles. It did break the bottles, but it wasn't as good as the real one. And the back of the knife uh, where the glass breaker goes in, the plastic did crack on the fake one, but it did not crack on the real one. Uh, when I do the disassembly, I'm gonna try to switch them. I don't know that it will fit, uh, but we'll give it a try. This is a replaceable piece. You can buy this piece by itself uh, from Benchmade. So uh, overall, you know, real world performance, we're, we've got an interesting, you know, an interesting conversation here. So let's go ahead and do some disassembly uh, and then we'll talk about the bits and pieces and overall conclusions. Also, by the way, I'm going to post the place where I got this knife on eBay uh, down in the description so you'll be able to know which knockoff this is. Uh, so let's get into disassembly. These knives look very similar, so I'm going to put their parts in two different bins here, cleaning out my magnetic bin here. So hardware is very similar. We have what looks like T10 on the pivots and then T8 or T6 rather everywhere else. Here is the pivot. This is the real SOCP folder. So I'll start kind of taking off on this side. By the way, the pocket clip on these uh, with the hole in it, I really, really like this pocket clip. Uh, it's the same on both because when you draw this out of your pocket, your finger is already right in place to open the knife. So I actually really like this, you know, profile of this knife uh, and the length of the blade and everything. It's a little bit long in the pocket. It doesn't bother me because I wear relatively loose fitting pants, uh, but this is a large knife. You can see you know, a lot of people talk about how large the 452 CF is and you know this knife is even slightly bigger uh, than that so relatively large folder this is bigger than a four inch cold steel tie light it's kind of between the four and the six inch cold steel tie light in size here is my t6 
I'm going after the uh, bolts that hold the scales on here and there are a lot of them so we'll take this one off I'm going to try to take the whole scale off and then see if that will kind of show you what the liners look like I'm going to have to take this one out from this side let me see if the scale will come off this pin uh, this bolt hole on the real one is a peg on one side <clears throat> I don't know why they did that but it will only come out from the bolt is only on this side so that looks like I'm gonna to have to take everything off of this side as well now, so in order to disassemble this the pocket clip does have to come off too so lots and lots of little bolts on this that have to come out. These knives take a long while to disassemble and to reassemble. And I'm doing two of them in one video, which makes me a genius, right? Uh, so there's the pocket clip. Two more bolts on, three more bolts on this side. And then I can start the disassembly process. Thankfully, all of these are coming out pretty easily. I've had this knife for a while, so it's good that they're still coming out easily. Sometimes those bolts free up. You can see there is some thread locker, thread protector stuff that has been put on all those little bolts. So now I've got the scale loose on this one, but the pivot actually has to come out on this too. So there's the pivot popping out that side. Take the tension off by pulling down on the axis lock. And there's the pivot that comes out. You have to untension it that way. Same as any other axis lock knife. There is the scale. So you can see bench made knife. Um, bronze washers rather than bearings like the zero tolerance. I'm going to start with the scale toward the pocket clip on this one since that one has to come off first. This is for a right hand tip down carry which is what most people will want to do with this knife. You can do tip up uh, but the knife is kind of long so you have to shimmy your hand down the knife to open it and with this opener on the knife with the, uh, the pocket clip with the hole in it it's way easier to do it with the pocket clip on the blade end. However, it does run interference for the axis lock on both of these. Uh, so if you flip the knife open hard and it locks hard, that lock knife, the lock bar locks upwards, it's kind of hard sometimes to pop it loose. And that's true on both of these knives, uh, not just the knockoff one. Like I said, the operation is remarkably, remarkably similar. The knockoff, you'll see, is a little thicker, right? The scales are a little thicker on this one. So you can see a slight difference. Um, but overall, you know, blade size, blade thickness, all that is, is very similar. Got to get the pivot. The pivot does function to hold the scales on, on both of these knives. This one actually has been thread lockered as well, at least on the big bolt on the pivot here. The small bolts on this one, I do not see any thread locking compound. So that is a difference already. But given the relative difference in the price of these knives, I can't say that's unexpected. All right, so there's the sides off. So you can see on the knockoff, uh, slightly thicker scale there, which is what gives the knife a little bit more girth. Otherwise, the measurements are very similar. Uh, similar skeletonizing on the handle scales. 
pop the pivot out here so that they look the same on camera. If I can take the pressure off of that. This one's being a little bit more stubborn. I'll open it this way. So there is the handle skeletonizing. You can see it looks very similar. The springs for the lock out of the way. Even the hole in here is the same shape, right? It's a very, very kind of accurate reproduction on this knife, more so than the the 535, the bug out uh, clones knockoffs that I had reviewed before. It's off. So like any axis lock where the pivot is involved, you have to, I'll done this one, get the pivot out and both sides off right before you can get the axis bar out and then slide it down like that undo the axis spring omega spring they call it and then pop the bar through and then the knife will come apart so on the real one we've got some kind of fitted pins down there at the bottom and then that will pop out and then the pins go through from from the outside on this side and they go into the glass breaker slash backspacer which kind of stops against that thing so that is the disassembly on the real one and as you can see these kind of go in through the side there uh, all the way in that way and there they are the the keyed keyed bottom pins for the real one uh, there we go got it so pivot is coming out now it's very stiff I think what that may be is some thread locker that got off of it yeah onto the sides when they assembled the knife so washers on this even though it's an inexpensive knockoff are still real phosphor bronze washers very similar to the real one now i can get the lock apart there's the lock and we can start working on getting the scale off. There we go. That popped out more easily than the real one. And then these come apart, just like so. So what I am going to try while I'm doing this is I'm gonna measure the real spacer versus the fake one. So this is the real one that's got solid. This is the fake one. So it's a tight fit, but it looks like you can actually fit the uh, real glass breaker into the knockoff knife, uh, which is pretty impressive given that these are not manufactured in the same place. Uh, so overall conclusions, let's talk which knife I actually carry. So given that the knockoff is literally 10% of the price of the real knife, uh, and it holds an edge better in real world conditions, most of the time I actually find myself with the fake one in my pocket, which is a surprise to me. Uh, so overall, you know, this is one instance where I actually did really like the knockoff. I did not expect this to be true, but it does kind of show you, you know, economic wise, why Benchmade, um, you know, has taken some criticism in recent years because they didn't do a whole lot better than a $20 knife with their $200 plus dollar knife. Uh, so that is my overall conclusion. Again, I really like the knockoff. I like the real one too, but for for 10 times the price i will generally carry this one so hope that is entertaining and keep adventuring